morning. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Good morning. It's Friday morning. It's the start of the weekend. And many of you all over the country, you're going into your weekend spots and having fun. And <laughs> that is really, really, really awesome. Some of you are just simply heading out of town. And that's a good thing. That's all good. It's all good. So overnight, we learned that the United Kingdom, most of the people in the United Kingdom voted to leave the U leave the European Union, which has significant political ramifications. I won't go into that because as the months unfold, it will. But what I wanted to talk about this morning is shame is a prison. That's right. Shame is a prison. And I wanted to talk about it from the perspective of how we are affected by the events that took place in our environment. Recently, I went to a, to a school district and they asked me to talk about what happened to me as a child. And they, the, really the subject was learning, laughter, and fun. And I'm like, okay, we're gonna talk about learning, but what happened to, I felt led to disclose what happened to me as a child and how it affects the way we interact with the wider society and the wider community as we grow. And in doing that, one of the things that became clear, and I wrote about this extensively, my blog is www.neverlooksback.com, and I wrote extensively about how shame is a prison. And let me define that for you. So many times in our lives, things happen to us. And when it happens, we're locked in to a situation. We're locked into a way of feeling. Many of us, I know in my story, for instance, my thing was in overcoming the fact that I became a single parent. And for me, I had the choice to make that become a statistic, lock me into a group and then never do anything about it, never achieve anything, never went on to achieving my goals. And I told myself, shame is a prison. You can either choose to look at this, that it happened, move on, or you can stay here in the prison that that situation created and not achieve anything. And I chose to make a story about it. Now, it's the same way that whatever activities happen to us, whatever it is that happens, you know, all kinds of things happen to people all day long. Some of us were molested as children. I am a survivor of sexual violence as a child. Some of us were were beaten on, were physically abused as children. Some of us were emotionally neglected. Some of us were simply abandoned by our parents, whether they lived in a castle or whether they lived in a, in a hut. The fact that they were not there emotionally provided no kind of support emotionally, mentally, means that you are still subject to abandonment. And so those, those conflagrations, those conflagrations, those things that identify and make up our perspectives. It creates the environment, our mental environment. Now, it's not just a physical environment, it's a mental environment, which becomes a way of thinking. That forms your reservoir of perspectives, and that influences the choices that you make. And so many times, we make choices and life choices based on our prison. We make life choices based on what happened to us that created shame. That shame became part of our mental reservoir and our mental environment. And then we further enhance it by making choices evolving out of that. Do you see what I mean? So let's put it into perspective now. In my story, I was molested as a child. I was molested when I was six years old by a family member who obviously was trusted enough to have had access to me so that other adults around were comfortable in leaving me with that person. That created shame in my sexuality. I'm just being honest. That shame could have been a prison that I would never emerge from. I could have used it and said, I'll never have sex. I'll never be part of the society. I'll never have children. I don't want to be in a relationship. I don't want to this. I don't want to that. It, it could have damaged the way that I thought about men, damaged the way that I thought about my parents, my the adults around me. It could have damaged me emotionally in not trusting adults because that was an adult who violated my trust. All of those things contributed to the prison that I could have been put on myself. Now, was it my fault? I was six years old. I was a child. So I had to weigh that into the perspective, but I chose to not let it be a prison. I chose to not let those thoughts influence or affect the way that I encounter or have relationships. It took time, but it does work. So today, as you go about your life, and as you go about doing the things that you normally do, think on this. It, are the things that happened to us created a shame for me? 
are those things the things that make life become a prison for me? And if that is the case, then it's time for us to rethink what we do. Don't let shame become a prison for you. Move on. It happened. Resolve it that it happened. You can't change it. It can't be undone. But what I can do is change the way that I think about it. And if we look at it like that, then everything is going to be all right. So remember to go to my website, theexodusfoundation.com. If you would like me to come speak at your event, of course, go to mainexpression.com, www.mainexpression.com, or simply reach out to me through Facebook or through my website, harrietkemick.org, to hear me talk about these and other subjects. Remember, have a great day. The best is yet to come.